Okay, we're going to talk about skull fontanelles and answer the what questions. What are fontanelles and what are their functions? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. So to begin, let's do a little orientation. Here's a lateral picture of a fetal skull and here's a superior illustration of a fetal skull. And there are the frontal bones and the frontal bones form the front of the fetal skull or forehead. And in a fetus, these two frontal bones are divided by a frontal suture right through the middle line and this frontal suture fuses after two or three months of, um, after birth and this is why in an adult you only see one adult frontal bone. Uh, the parietal bones form the uh, superior wall of the calvarium or skull and uh, the coronal suture uh, borders the front of the parietal bones and the sagittal suture goes right down the middle of the two parietal bones. The occipital bone forms the back of the skull, the part that you would rest against a pillow, and it's bordered anteriorly by the lambdoid suture. And finally, along the lateral part of the skull, we find the temporal bone. So the calvaria is a term you'll hear quite a bit, which means the skull cap. And it's all these bones here that we see. And so when we talk about fontanelles, it's these bones that are going in spaces between them that will form not only sutures, but fontanelles. So bones of the fetal calvaria are separated by fibrous connective tissue. And this connective tissue is what's going to give rise to sutures and fontanelles. So here we can see fibrous connective tissue separating these bones of the calvaria. And if we just take a look at this one area right there and blow it up, you can see a bone on one side, a bone on the other, and it's filled between these bones with fibrous connective tissue. This makes a fibrous joint. And that's what's going to be forming our sutures. That's, they they go all the way through into adolescence before they fuse and become ossified. <laughs> now, the other spaces are these big spaces of connective tissue called fontanelles. And there are six fontanelles in the fetal calvaria. First is called the anterior fontanelle located there. And it's bounded by the coronal suture and the frontal suture and sagittal sutures. And the anterior fontanelle uh, is diamond shaped as evidenced here in this uh, fetal skull. And also when you take a look, it's the largest of the ones that there is this anterior fontanelle shaped like a diamond. And the anterior fontanelle fuses about 18 months after delivery. It's the last of the fontanelles to fuse. The posterior fontanelle located right there is bordered by the sagittal suture as well as the lambdoid sutures. It's going to fuse around three months. It's one of the first ones to fuse. Then we have this phenoidal fontanelle located there. And this phenoidal fontanelle is on the lateral anterior side of the skull, just above the sphenoid uh, bone. And it's going to fuse about six months after birth. And then finally, the mastoid fontanelle, this soft spot, and it's the lateral back side of the skull. It's going to fuse anywhere between six and 18 months after delivery. Um, so fontanelles are also known as the soft spot. So when you take a look at the top of a, a newborn, there is that soft spot. Now that soft spot, these fontanelles, especially this anterior fontanelle, can give some give, be a window into the health status of a newborn. For example, if this fontanelle or soft spot is sunken, it may be indicative of dehydration. Or if there's bulging from the soft spot, it may be indicative of an increase of intracranial pressure like in hydrocephaly. So why do we have fontanelles? Well, one is to enable the skull to be more flexible during childbirth. So here's an illustration of a baby inside the uterus. Look at the size of the fetal head. Look at the size of that birth canal. So one of the things that these uh, fontanelles enable to do is the molding of the skull as the baby comes out this very narrow birth canal. And this is why some newborns have this dome-shaped head that will go away after a couple of days. But that's one of the big reasons nature enabled these fontanelles. But it's not the only one. Another reason, oh, I meant to mention this, is that oh, this is why also in, in societies they do in all throughout centuries, they've done this, some have done this head binding where they'll push against this fetal skull and give rise to a skull that looks like this. And they'll do this from anywhere one month to 12 months of age and develop these types of skull. And they, there's records going back to hundreds of years before Christ. And some cultures today still practice this. 
Another reason for the fontanelles is to allow for rapid stretching as the brain grows. So here is a lateral view of the skull. We'll take an um, axial section and shing, separate the skull, lift it up, and we see the brain. Now watch, as the brain begins to grow and it pushes against the skull, the skull must accommodate this rapid growth. In the fetal brain, what happens is the fetal brain is growing way faster than the skull and the bone that around surrounding it, especially in the first four years like right after birth and then those first four years. So the skull helps to accommodate for this rapid growth. So the fontanelles and sutures accommodate the rapid growth of the brain. But they also accommodate for conditions such as in hydrocephalus, which is an increase of cerebral spinal fluid in the ventricular system. And so here we see an infant with no hydrocephalus. And what happens is these ventricles are filled with CSF and they're overfilled and it results in this. No hydrocephalus, hydrocephalus, where those, invent those uh, ventricles enlarge because they have so much CSF. And as those ventricles get bigger, the entire head becomes enlarged. And so why does the head become enlarged? Because the fontanelles and sutures enable the skull to accommodate for that pathological increase in brain size because the ventricle is filled with too much CSF. So here's a 12-month-old little baby girl who has hydrocephalus and look, this, the skull gets really big and the fontanelles and sutures enable for that accommodation. Where I mentioned in an adult, we just go into a coma because our sutures and our fontanelles are all ossified. Now, what would happen if the fontanelles never fused? You can get a condition that's called cleidocranial dysplasia, or CCD. So, clido is, um, means clavicle, because in this condition, individuals who have CCD have either poorly developed or completely absent clavicles, of why this individual can push his shoulders in so close. And cranial, because they have these, uh, where this anterior fontanelle in this lateral X, where you can see that big black space, that anterior fontanelle never came together, never fused. And you have these open sutures as shown there, as well as these maxillary sinuses didn't develop properly. In addition, they have supernumerary teeth, especially the deciduous time, but not so much the adult teeth. Uh, a number of other conditions and nerves and bones throughout the body that are problematic with CCD. Probably the most famous individual CCD is Gaten Matarazzo. And Gaten is known uh, professionally because of Stranger Things. That's a very cool TV show. And here you can see him at Comic-Con with some of his co-stars. In the state of Utah, Gaten's known for another thing is because Gaten came in 2017 and met all the other people in the state of Utah who had CCD, including Dr. Kelly Woznick, um, who is a nurse practitioner, who together they started a charity called CCD Smiles in which uh, this charity helps individuals who have CCD and to help them um, with surgeries and such. And so I just like kudos to Gaten and Dr. Woznick. Uh, people like that make the world a better place. So that, my friends is the skull and its fontanelles in a nutshell.